sir please start yes okay so there are 36 attendees and i think i can start 37 yes yeah is my ppt visible yes sir okay so good morning and a warm welcome to all the participants today so it is really my pleasure to start a session on introduction to strategic management there are some parts of the topic that are dependent on the ppt there are some which i will discuss dictate sometimes there will be topics which maybe i would ask you to take a little note of if you have any questions you can definitely post it in the chat box so that i can have a look at the queries that students can at any point of time have with regard to their topics. Now, as you can see, the topic that we have is introduction to strategic management. And before I move into defining what strategic management is, what is the definition of strategic management, I would like to tell you a little background of why strategic management is relevant. Now, there is always a difference between how a company wants to be successful or how a company can be successful and not be successful together. And definitely, it is not always that companies can be successful by playing safe. Companies should come out of the traditional ways of doing business and focus on something that is more innovative in terms of the approach that it has with regard to dealing with competitors. Now, the competitors in the market are aggressive people. They always have a tendency to do something new for business. And it is in this context that a time back, John Welch, who innovated the concept of strategy for business, found out that the way to remain relevant and the way to remain successful is to replace older product lines with newer product lines. And this should ideally be done before the competitors so that they can very firmly resolve the problems or issues that they come up with. And it was found out by Welch that most shopping for festivals were done online. And the company really had to enter the internet age with a certain amount of aggression. So it was not very easy for companies to do it. And Wells decided that the top managers in any business company to find what we call an internal mentor who would tutor them in the World Wide Web. So to know exactly how firms operate. And it is true that there is no such thing what we call the internet mentor. It has to be devised and acknowledging the thrust of generic electric. It was a bold strategic move. Ultimately. That would be needed. To formulate. The. New techniques of doing business. And the company like Generic Electric ultimately analyzes questions which the competitors had to deal with. And it allowed them to do customers online banking, which ultimately was interesting as this became the hallmark of success for General Electric way back. 
similarly, if I look at the whole concept and perspective, then we come to what we know as strategic management. And by strategic management, we here mean the set of managerial decisions and actions that determines the long run performance of the corporation. So what the corporation would want to do and how much would they want to do? It includes environmental scanning, both external and internal, strategic formulation, internal and external, strategy planning, evaluation and control. The study of strategic management, if I look at the overview, it emphasizes on monitoring and evaluating the external opportunities and threats in the light of a corporation's decision making ability. Originally, the business policy or the strategic management incorporated what we call a long term vision, a long range policy. And in general, organizations tend to have what we call a long run orientation, long run orientation to business, which was a concern for organizations for long. To what extent would these lay emphasis on business outcomes and business results. And these tools and techniques laid the very foundation of business enterprises. So this brings us to a, a comprehensive definition, but before we go to that comprehensive definition, we need to have a generalized definition of strategic management, which involves a set of decisions and actions that results in the formulation and implementation of plans that are designed to achieve organization's objectives. So ultimately, these plans have a long term objective. And that objective is to achieve the objectives of the organization in the long run. If I go to another very basic definition, I get the concept of strategic management, which can be understood in terms of the art and science of formulating, implementing, and evaluating cross-functional decisions that enables an organization to achieve its strategic objectives. So ultimately, it is the organization's strategic objectives which strategic management seeks to achieve. And of course, the strategic objectives of the organization are diverse. So there are multiple objectives. That any organization would ultimately have. And aiming at. Accomplishing those objectives. For the purpose of. Achieving its. Desired results. In the most befitting manner. So that the vision and mission of the organization can be attained. As well as we can look at the strategic plans that are useful and also the strategic plans for the organization which possibly are not that useful. Moving ahead. 
Now, George Kluwek, way back, said something of saying that uh, how do you organize a large scale future oriented plan for the purpose of interacting with the external environment and uh, orienting it to achieve the long run vision and mission of the organization at large. It should also to a great extent reflect on the achievement of a competitive situation for formulating results. There are several critical tasks that are associated with strategic management, which we can call the phases of the strategic management process. Because you know there is something you have in your syllabus also, which we call the objectives of strategic management. And the objectives of strategic management are multiple. Formulation of mission, including broad statements in terms of the purpose, in terms of the philosophy, and also in terms of the goals. The objectives, as I was suggesting, it involves finding out where the organization is now and where does the organization want to reach. So it bridges the gap between where it is now and where it wants to reach. It gives organizations a clear strategic vision. It also provides a very distinct focus on what is strategically important and what is not important. So that distinction between important and unimportant is also attached to strategic management. It also gives a clear understanding on what is relevant, particularly in terms of achieving the clear cut objectives of strategy. Because we are in a dynamic environment, very fast changing, and the dynamic nature of the environment makes it important for us to identify the issues that would possibly reflect upon the organization's ability to match the internal as well as the external environment. The competitive environment and the areas where it can identify the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. That is also one 
very important aspect that strategic management would endeavor to identify. It seeks to assess the organization's external environment. We know that the external environment would pose challenges, threats. So, challenges or threats, as well as there are opportunities of growth. There are issues with regard to how an organization would be able to deal with the opportunities because analyzing the opportunities of the firm, particularly in terms of the contextual factors, are also important. Whether there are any major resource constraints where you can match up those resources with the external environment of the business at large. And identification of the desirable options by evaluating those options in the light of the organizational mission and vision. So, what mission the organization would be able to accept is also a critical task that strategic management would be involved in. Now, planning, planning for the strategy for multidivisional corporations are time consuming affairs, detailed time consuming affairs. And it is essential that an organization has to engage in what we call the situation analysis analyzing the situation from developing the business units and dealing with the lower level managers who need to keep a track of corporate mission and the corporate objectives. So, We need to analyze how from international considerations, you know, profits earned, manufacturing units set up, and all ultimately the things that we observe, identify, in terms of the choice of the strategy. So an organization can have several options and it is up to the way to find out what are the ways in which one can deal with finance, deal with marketing, HR, and all other areas that businesses are strategically engaged in doing. Now, how do we align our objectives with organizations' mission? 
vision and culture what are the ways in which those options can be tested ultimately in terms of the long term objectives the general strategies and developing activities that are compatible with the selected set of long term objectives and the overall strategy long term objectives are a subset of the various short term objectives that organizations may have in the light of its goals and find out and formulate what are the ways in which those aspects can be addressed as well as to evaluate to understand the context of implementing the strategic choices particularly due to globalization markets have become polarized markets have become internationalized and it is important that we develop short term and long term strategies so that we can utilize them for matching the resource allocations in terms of people in terms of task in terms of structure in terms of technology reward system etc it also fundamentally would provide avenues for judging the success of the overall strategic process which definitely can become an input for future decision making how those can be utilized by the organizations of tomorrow there are different aspects or models of strategic management that starts with what we call environment scanning because ultimately to come up with a consensus with regard to what the environment is going to offer us it provides a set of long term objectives and general strategies that ultimately would help in the achievement of most desirable options it helps in developing annual activities for short term strategy development which 
need to be compatible, which need to match with the selected set of long term objectives and help in the development of a strategy. It should also focus on, like I mentioned, the vision and mission in terms of the elements which have to be conducted for doing business in terms of the internal factors, which are the strengths and weaknesses, and the environmental factors, which are opportunities and threats for the same. However, it is essential that strategic choices are implemented in the regard to deal with the various elements right from environment scanning to strategy formulation, strategy implementation, and ultimately evaluation and control. It also would evaluate, would seek to evaluate the success of the strategic process. So, environment scanning, mission, what is the reason for the existence of the company? Why do I exist? And vision would be more connected with what I want to achieve. And a culture of achieving that vision and mission has to be set up. The culture has a futuristic orientation. The culture should be set of values, set of beliefs, norms that have a futuristic orientation, that have a way, a method to gain strategic advantage, method to define the internal variables involved. Now, strategic formulation also is the development of long term plans that in fact effective formulation of environmental opportunities and threats. And these are in the light of corporate strengths and weaknesses. It spells out the corporate mission helps in achieving the desirable objectives, ultimately developing the strategies and setting policy guidelines that are aimed for the future. What is a mission? You have in your syllabus also, if you can see, Alignment of strategy with mission, vision, and culture. 
what is the mission? Like I already said, mission refers to the purpose of why an organization exists. It tells us what the company is trying to provide to the society at large. It can be just a service. A house cleaning. A product. Or maybe an automobile. For any organization. It is extremely important to. Define its mission. Which is the. Fundamental. Or unique purpose. Which. Sets. A company apart. From. That of other firms. In similar line of business. It also would. Identify the scope of operations of the company. It can be in terms of products offered, or it can be in terms of market served. Mission also. At many point of any point of time can include. The company's philosophy about. How the business is. And. How it treats its employees. It also entails finding out. About. How it does business. And how it treats its employees. It. Puts into words. Not only what the company is now. Some companies are. Operating in similar lines, so. What it is now. But also what it wants to become. So. Management has a vision of the future. What it is now is more into its mission statement. And what it wants to become. In future. That would come under the vision statement. And. The mission statement describes what a company is now, and the vision statement describes the company what it is likely to become. And sometimes companies can combine the two, that is the mission and the vision statement together. The mission statement. As a result. Would promote a sense of. Shared expectations. In employees. And communicates. A public image. To important stakeholder groups. Who are all members of. The company's task environment. Maytag Corporation, an example to. Explain. The quality of home life, how we can improve upon. By building, marketing and serving. 
the best appliances in the world. So here, a broad mission statement or a narrow mission statement, both are possible. It seeks to serve the best interests of the shareholders, customers, and employees. A broadly defined mission statement keeps the company from restricting itself to any one particular field or product line, but it fails to identify what is it making and what it seeks to emphasize for the future. So the technology can be a part of the mission statement. So somebody can try to make transport system better and a transportation company can have a similar mission statement. Objectives are how do we define or how do we differentiate a mission vision from that of its objectives? Objectives are end results, end results of a planned activity. They state what is to be accomplished by when and if possible if they can be quantified the achievement of corporate objectives ultimately should result in the fulfillment of a corporation's mission what it gives back to society in the long run, what it entails to express in terms of the objectives for the company, and objectives are not the same ideally as goals, because these two terms are often confusing and students can make a mistake as to whether the objective statement and the goal statement are the same or not. Goals are more of an open-ended statement with regard to what a company would seek to accomplish. They are with no quantification and no time criteria for its accomplishment. So it can be in terms of increased profitability and it is not a goal. It is definitely an objective. And let's say a company wants to increase its profits 10% over the last year. That can be a goal that any organization can seek to achieve.
Now, any organization, when it is formulating its strategy and aligning that in terms of strategic objective, strategic management, it has to continue with three areas. Number one is with regard to strategy formulation. Number two is with regard to strategy implementation. And third one, third step is in terms of strategy evaluation. So formulation, implementation and evaluation are the three levels at which strategy is supposed to traverse or travel. I was speaking about mission, vision, goals, objectives. We were discussing some part of SWOT analysis. We discussed about the internal strengths and weaknesses. Discussed about the long-term objectives. alternative strategies and ultimately strategic selection. All these three would entail formulating company-based strategy for any organization. Once the strategies are formulated, the important job lies in strategy implementation. And that implementation has to be in terms of the annual objectives of the company, the regular policies which the company would be interested in formulating, levels of employee motivation, and resource allocation. So there is a defined budget. There is a defined resource. And. Companies would be seeking to. Achieve that. Within. It's allotted domain. Much depends on. The efficiency at which. The organization would. Seek to. Increase its competition with regard to formulation of business strategy. Now, if I go into a little more detail with regard to strategy implementation, we can see that with the objectives, there are policies which help in planning the strategic decision making in terms of employee motivation, in terms of resource allocation, 
in terms of finding out areas of improvement that for any company would be glorifying. The programs and policies are tools to accomplish a single use plan for the organization. And ultimately, choose or discuss areas of gray areas or areas of concern for developing developing maybe a sophisticated information system which might enable customers to track their shipments at any point of time. That is one more important outcome that strategy possibly would be able to provide. One part of strategy evaluation or implementation is the way they are aligned with budgets, programs, procedures, reviews. They are allocated in terms of the resources. Because ultimately, we were talking of policies, and companies can use a variety of policies to ultimately ensure that the employees throughout the firm can make decisions which ultimately would support the organization's mission, objectives, and strategies. Now, General Electric, we were talking of that in the beginning of the class. It had a very strong policy that one has to be a number one or number two in whichever product line they operate. That option is always kept there. That was the uniqueness to which the differenti differentiation strategy of the company was prevalent. Alignment of vision, mission, goals, and objectives by employing or through effectively employing a system of internal review and external review, creating a form of performance mapping and taking corrective actions. Purpose is simple. One has to identify those areas where performance improvements are essential 
to identify deviations normally the undesirable de deviations and trying to overcome those deviations and formulate the ways in which it can change its procedures for the same. Evaluation and control of strategy is thus a process in which the corporate activities and the performance results are monitored ultimately so that you know the actual performance can be compared with the desired performance. Here comes the role of performance mapping. And managers at all levels are required to use the resulting information so that ultimately they can take corrective actions and resolve problems. Now, evaluation and control is the final major element of strategic management. It also helps in pinpointing weaknesses, problem areas, and ultimately implement the strategic plans and enter and stimulate the process to begin again. Ultimately, performance is the end result. And it includes in a major way achieving the desired outcomes. It is justified. The goals of the organization here are very much justified. The justification is in terms of its ability to improve upon organizational performance and to do a proper strategy evaluation, it has to be clear. In terms of what returns, returns on investment, it can be in terms of benefits, it can be in terms of profits that are expected to generate. For example, the success of Delta Airlines turnaround strategy was evaluated in terms of the amount spent on each airline seat per mile of flights. And overall, the evaluation and control of performance completes the strategic management model. They are based on performance results, management 
has the need to make adjustments in terms of strategy formulation, implementation, and both. Now, this is a comprehensive model of strategic management. You can draw this diagram. Whatever we discussed till now, how the different dimensions of strategic management are connected in terms of its vision and mission, how they are connected in terms of its long-term objectives, generating, evaluating, and selecting strategies, implementation of strategic management issues, functional issues, and measuring and evaluating performance. So, the vision and mission are balanced by if you can see the existence of internal and external audit programs which correspond to the ways in which the whole system of the strategic management process can be dynamic, dynamically integrated. I hope there are no questions till whatever we have covered because we are almost one hour into the class and the areas that we have covered are in your module eight as per your syllabus. And we deal with the different topics that are related to your basic understanding of strategic management. Now, having said that, we can move into something more that is more of an area that students of strategic management would find interesting in terms of analyzing the models of strategic management, dimensions of strategic management, which spells out the broad characteristics when we were talking of strategic management objectives, which any organization which is involved in a, formulating a strategy would seek to achieve. Now, some of the dimensions of strategic decision making would involve strategic issues of a company that originate from the top and would request or would require top management support. It would aid in better decision making and help in evaluating current performance results 
what kind of results are we seeking to achieve? Also relevant is reviewing the corporate governance models. Scanning and assessing the external environment to determine the strategic objectives that organization would ultimately seek to accomplish. We have talked about the SWOT factors and what, how the SWOT factors are helpful in selecting programs, budgets for the company at large, procedures and evaluate the implemented strategy vis-a-vis -vis the, you know, getting the control of the overall activities so that the dynamic placements are achieved fundamentally. Now, there is no doubt about the fact that strategies are futuristic oriented. They have an orientation to achieve something for the long run. So they have multifunctional consequences. And strategic issues required the organization's external environment So, how the organization would actually help in doing things which would facilitate the outcomes, the results of the three levels of strategic decisions which are usually taken at the corporate level, the unit or business level decision making, and ultimately the decision making that is taken at the functional level. Because ultimately strategic for strategy formulation would involve a coherence of all these. influences of how the organization would look at the strategic objectives, the metrics, the evaluation in terms of the environment scanning and how future can be forecasted because ultimately there is a futuristic perspective to every business operations and there is a way of aligning those perspectives with what the business is expected to 
skin. Before I move into the next topic, there are some of the important issues that one has to keep in mind with regard to strategy formulation. And that is strategy formulation should ensure involvement of employees, identification of gaps, in among activities, among individuals and groups so that they can be reduced as much as possible. Dealing with resistance to change almost like group based strategic decisions which are likely to be drawn from the best available alternatives and formulating the strategies which ultimately would take care of an organization's ability to prevent problems. What it means to deal with problems and how does the organization inculcate the tendencies to deal with these problems are also one of the very important strategic decision making. Strategy formulation goes in a long way with regard to how it is matched against the very purpose. What is it doing in organization? Now, you have a topic in your syllabus, which is the geno organizational genomics. Now, what is a genomic organization? And genomic organization would refer to the linear order of DNA elements and their division into chromosomes, smaller division. And you know, like you have chromosomes and genes and cells, all these they work together. So, genome organization would refer to that. 3D structural pattern and how the DNA sequences are, are placed within the nucleus of the organization. So organization has a nucleus and how the DNA is suited, is matched with it. That is also important. Now there are three levels. Of the DNA organizational genome. Function. Which. Would mostly operate at. Three hierarchical levels. The spatial and the temporal organization of nuclear processes themselves would ultimately include 
the transcription of the organization, the DNA replication, the DNA repair, and understanding the way the chromosome would function, the genes would function for genetic regulation and control of the gene expression programs. Now, the organization's genetic components are an essential part of genomic organization in totality. And they can be divided into what we may call molecules, chromosomes, which would help in, which would aid in functionally coinciding with the organization and its components. So organizational genomics is basically an approach that understands the it tries to get information about the organism and the organization. Purpose is to forecast, to know the imminent problems that are anticipated that can occur. And what are the ways in which these problems can be dealt with? They can be, you know, removed. And there are methods of equipping with the organizational analysis which may which we may call so there is a framework of organizational genomic analysis popularly called the vrio framework vrio v r i o value v for value does the organization provide competitive advantage? What are the ways in which the organization can for us provide competitive advantage? Rareness. Does other organizations, particularly the competitor organizations, possess them? Number three, imitability. Is it costly or is it possible for the other firms to imitate it? Is it costly for imitating? And number four, organization, whether the firm is organized in order to exploit the resource. So that is an important area in which the organization can deal with its genomics. Now, 
We have spoken about the alignment of individual level objectives. Ultimately, that would aim at sustaining the corporate capabilities to propose a five step resource based approach to strategy analysis. It can identify and classify firms resources in terms of strengths and weaknesses, combine them with corporate capabilities to foster how a corporation can do something exceedingly well that is maybe develop distinct competencies, distinctive competencies. There are core competency which anybody is able to achieve and then there are distinctive competencies. A price, the profit potential of the resources and capabilities that ultimately can help in identifying the resource gaps and investing in upgrading the weaknesses. So, that is also very, very important. Now, how do we deal with the strategy formulation, which we mainly call the competitive strategy, the competitive tactics, the business strategy, because we were talking of the business levels. So what are the strategies of business and how can an organization align the corporate level objective, vision, mission statement with the individual level objectives. And what can be made in terms of how alternative strategies can be generated for the same and evaluated? Now, The makers have to carefully consider or concentrate on the alternatives, the action possibilities, rather than a mission to be fulfilled and ultimately the objectives to be achieved. Because it is easier to deal with the alternative courses of action that exist right here and now that to rethink about what the organization would plan about accomplishing in the future. And we need to often two strategies that set objectives for us, particularly not having any specific choice. And 
incorporate them in our broad mission statement. There is one very fundamental ability that any strategy would have is that an organization who is purely strategic would take care of its ability to prevent problems. And those problems are not the real life recurrent problems, but the ones that possibly are not that disturbing or the ones that possibly are not that have any issue. And this are these are also related to the next concept which we will go as per your syllabus. EVA driven responsibility accounting. What EVA is and what exactly EVA would seek to achieve? Now, strategic management has its own share of risks because there is no doubt about the fact that it can definitely have some negative impact on operational responsibilities. So it is important that one has to act in a very judicious manner and Financial strategists may shrink individual responsibility, or sometimes there can be unattained expectations over which people can be disappointed. They may not want things to happen or operate in that way, which can lead to utter frustration or utter disappointment. And that is where things have to improve upon. Now, this you can note down the EVA Environment Accounting Economic Value Accounting Environment, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Economic Value Added Accounting, which is a part of Responsibility Accounting. So, we need to find out, we need to understand what EVA is. Economic value added. So, EVA, economic value added, refers to a measure of the company's financial performance based on the residual wealth, the returns calculated by deducting its cost of capital from its operating profits and they are adjusted for the payment of taxes on a cash basis, on a regular basis. Economic value added can be calculated as follows. Product selling price minus 
the expenses associated with selling the asset minus the purchase price the purchase price of the organization as such and deducted or minus expenses associated with buying the asset so that is also one important part of economic value added calculation now when we are talking of eva driven approach in terms of strategy what we are showing or what we are trying to present is a measure of the financial performance based on the concept of that all the capital ultimately has a cost you know it's not free and is earning more than the cost of capital now this earning more than the cost of capital what is the problem what is the benefit it creates value for shareholders it is after tax net operating profit no pat minus a capital charge accumulated on the same it is eva can also be regarded as the true economic profit consisting of all the costs including the cost of capital if a company's return on capital exceeds its its cost of capital then we can safely say that the company is really being able to create true value for its shareholders and that value is what the company wants to generate an advanced form of this you know eva is the concept of mva which is also now it is very commonly used in the field of finance and strategy which is called the market value added and eva driven responsibility accounting we need to understand how or to what extent this responsibility accounting would be helpful in ascertaining the various dimensions of an organization particularly in uh, large size and complex organizations which are highly decentralized so the responsibility accounting system ultimately is constructing to announcement and to collecting of costs for the purpose of providing them individual levels of responsibility also together there are various supervisory areas and every supervisory area is given a fixed amount so that the supervisory area is responsible and over which they have to be disciplined the responsibility centers are primarily divided into four main major 
cost center, revenue center, profit center, and investment center. And when we compare the standard data with actual results, they may be both favorable and unfavorable. And when this actual data is greater than the standard, then, then the, it is considered that the result is favorable. Responsibility accounting can be used to find the causes of such variations and hence try, ultimately the purpose is to try to improve upon performance. And it is the manager's responsibility ultimately to see that whatever goals the organization has, those goals can be very, very effectively attained. In continuance with what we understand, I'll be showing you some areas which are essential for even your preparation for the exam. I hope my new screen is visible. There are various levels of strategic management, levels that include the corporate strategy. Here is an example of a high profile corporate planner like companies like IBM, General Motors, and Ford, how they ran into some issue with regard to upstarting their scale of business. Now, how do you divide strategic unit in terms of organizational chart, functional areas of business? What are the forms of functional strategy? Internal strategy, marketing strategy, HR strategy, all that. What are the rational processes of strategic management? And how we can analyze, monitor, review, and evaluate those? I think in the beginning, if you remember, we talked about the mission and vision statement. We talked about the corporate appraisals, what analysis, generating strategic options, strategic evaluation choice, strategy implementation, ultimately aiming at a strong environmental analysis, competitive analysis in that regard. See, there are some examples that can be talked about in terms of examples of mission statements. British Airways seeks to be the world's favorite airline. Why it exists? Because it wants to give people a good experience. Nokia 
it focuses more on connecting people. GHL, it speaks about delivering promises. So, some popular examples are here speaking about the role, roles of various mission statements. Now, this is again an exam-oriented exam question that might be asked in terms of explaining, is there a link or a relationship between the mission, goals and objectives? Well, submission is an open ended statement. Of the firm's very purpose and strategy. Strategic goals and objectives. Would translate the mission into strategic milestones. Ultimately. For the business strategy to reach. And. Ultimate objective is the is what the organization would want to achieve. A strategic objective will possess four dominant distinct characteristics which sets it apart from mission statement. A precise formulation of the attribute sort. An index or measure. For the progress towards the attribute. A target to be achieved, a time frame by which it is to be achieved. So there is always a timeline that has to be followed, aiming at or targeting at the objectives that it should ideally try to achieve. We have heard of the smart objectives the word smart what it means in terms of being specific being measurable being attainable being relevant and being time bound so that smart objective is also that something which is indicated very greatly here Now, objectives perform five dominant functions in terms of planning, in terms of providing a framework for achieving the responsibility, the integration, the motivation and the evaluation of the same. Now, We talked about internal analysis. So internal analysis would deal with threshold resources, threshold competencies, unique resources, and any organization's core competencies. OK. And often. There are confusions with regard to. What the resources are and what competencies they are engaged in bringing. How you judge an organization by 
in terms of its resources, in terms of its competencies, in terms of its processes. While examining the resource based view of strategy. Now the SWOT analysis, which is strategic option of choice, because as per the syllabus, value chain framework, quotas five framework, strategic planning, okay, these have to be dealt with and any management, they need to seek, identify, evaluate alternative forces of action to ensure that the business can achieve a creative process of generating alternatives that are built on the business and allowing it to tackle products or problems ultimately to improve upon its competitive advantage, competitive decision making. And also, the focus should be on what basis should the organization compete and on what basis can it achieve competitive advantage. What are the alternative directions that are available? And which products or markets should any organization want to enter or leave? What alternative methods are available? Ultimately, so that the chosen direction can be attained. So, the basis in which it is going to compete in its markets. The Rocks Corporation, they have a certain competitive advantage. And it refers to a competitive scope. Ultimately, it refers to the way in which the organization can gain competitive advantage and a certain edge over its rivals. Now, why should a company choose on a certain company or a product? It can be option one that the price of the product or service is lower or Number two, the product or service to them is perceived to provide added value. They are widely applicable to firms, particularly if they deal with price based strategies. Differentiation, branding, dealing with product performance, and offering varied service levels. Now, 
this is again an important question for you. For any exam. How do organizations go for strategic evaluation? And. Why strategic control is important. Now. Two very. Fundamental reasons. Review and implementation. Containing the suitability of the strategy. Considering two broad aspects. How the performance of the strategy. Can pull the business on course for reaching its. Well defined strategic objectives. What are the ways in which forecasts? of the environment on which the strategy was based or have or are still accurate or have unforeseen threats or opportunities that arise subsequently and might necessitate a reconsideration of the strategy. A formal top down strategy process looks something like this. You have the general manager, the director, you have the PR specialist. SBU 1, SBU 2, SBU 3, function and operation. And how larger organizations would formalize the process of strategy formulation. A well designed designated team responsible for strategy development. There are several group of actors in this process. Top management having an expert staff. Who. Can deal with business intelligence who can deal with. Advising divisions on formulating strategy monitoring results. Groups of managers. Often the management teams of SBUs meeting periodically. To monitor the success of the present strategies and to develop new ones. They're also referred to as strategy away days because they often take place away to avoid interruptions in the day to day functioning that an organization would have. Formal collection of information for strategy purpose. The management team will, team will call upon data from within and outside the firm. To understand their challenges they face and the resources at their disposal. They can include. Environmental scanning reports. Complied by business intelligence functions. Competitor behavior market trends. Specially commissioned reports and particular markets products competitors. Management accounting information on operating cost performance. Together with financial forecasts. Research reports from external consultancies. On market opportunities and threats. Process of communicating and implementing the business strategy. Which can be accomplished using a combination of the following methods. Writing a formal document, briefing meetings, presentations, development of detailed policies, programs and budgets, development of performance targets for both managers and staff. Ultimately, you know, these ensure that everyone plays their part in the development of strategy and ultimately for receiving for doing uh, receiving their financial rewards for the company at large.
now we will move into the porter's model in the next class and just i will give you some of the hints for what we are going to take up in the next class and then last 5 minutes i will keep for some questions if you have any you can post in the question answer box so that i can exactly know if you have any queries with regard to the topics we have covered and porter's model porter's five forces model pestel analysis all that we will be covered in the class and how they deal with various issues interferences and uh technological forces political environment economic influences social demographic patterns values all that then you have political social economic cultural technological environmental legal all that will be there techniques of scanning the external environment swot analysis purpose of conducting a swot analysis from swot to strategy strategy formulation development the tau's approach okay so threats opportunities weaknesses strengths that also can come under these these ones now i'll not be covering any more topics today but i would definitely want you to post questions if you have any in the q and a box so that it is visible and i know that if you have any questions for the same notes on whatsapp group and where you can get the pdf uh, right now whatever we have shared in the class you have to listen to the class any additional information that you required we will definitely be pro providing you with it uh towards the end and you have your study material so whatsapp group i am not aware of any whatsapp group that exist or i am not a part of any whatsapp group here if you have any specific questions with regard to your subjects and the topics that we have covered you can in terms of the topics that we have covered if you have any questions where you know you think that more elaboration is needed you can read books strategic management is an interesting area so we can provide you that if you want george and gluek is a good book Wheelin and Hunger is a good book. George and Chloe.
strategic management, George and Gluick. This is the author who writes a good book. We have one more book, Concepts in Strategic Management, Cases and Business Policies by Whelan and Hunger. That also you can refer so far as your reference book is concerned. Are you reading any other material? Have you all received the institute study material on this subject? I hope you have received the uh, study material by the institute in the subject. And detailed, you know, case studies or if you have any pattern for MCQ questions, that also will be based on your understanding of the topics that has been covered in the subject. Try to give examples as much as you can in your answer so that your answers are more, you know, contextual. No other questions? Nobody has? Everybody has understood everything? I hope you all have followed the class. I expect some response in the question answer session or chat box. Something related to the subject if you have listened to me. So I hope you have all understood the topics we have covered. In my next session in October, the schedule has already been given to you. I will be moving towards the next module and covering the important areas from there. So there are around five modules as you can see in your syllabus and in five sessions, uh, four modules, sorry. So in five sessions, we will be con continuing and completing them all. So this is all I have from my end. For today. Thank okay, you very sir. much okay. for attending the session. Have a good day. OK, sir. I'm ending from here, sir. OK, so can I exit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Cross, uh, please cross here. Cross your login, sir. Okay. Only cross the window. Cross the window, sir, only.